I'm back! How good were James and Wayne though? Yeah, I know. So thanks fellow Azure dudes for championing the show when I went away on a little break. Yep. Now this week I have some excellent stories for you as well. The biggest DDoS attack in internet history, Azure does space and quantum at the same time, and Azure Arc gets a really cool update. And now I would normally tell you an interesting tech fact, but there's too much to get through. Sorry. This week, Microsoft released some stats on how they are mitigating distributed denial of service or DDoS attacks. They're not only describing how they protected Azure services, but also how many attacks there were. And this blew my mind. Pfft, yeah. Now we all know that internet services experience attacks frequently and the bigger the service, well, the bigger the target. I just didn't know that it was this much. In August 2021, there was an average of 1,955 attacks per day that Azure prevented or mitigated, with the highest being 4,296 on August 10. That's over 4,000 in a single day. In the second half of 2021, there were 359,713 attacks in total. Holy Batman! That's like an attack now, and now, and now. So last October on this show, I did tell you about a huge DDoS attack of 2.4 terabit per second. That's 300 gigabytes per second of rubbish data being hurled at a service. Now since then, three larger attacks have been mitigated in Azure, the biggest being in November and measuring 3.47 terabits on the ddos meter That is probably the biggest in DDoS and internet history and Azure was able to squash that one too. Now, while the numbers are impressive and quite frankly hard to comprehend, I think the main message here is that DDoS attacks are not going away nor getting any smaller. Because they are so easy to mount and cheap to buy, yes, you can buy a DDoS as a service. You can. We'll only see more of them and bigger ones. However, taking advantage of cloud platforms like Azure means you will most likely never have to worry about it. That is one of the reasons I love cloud. You can get all the details in the link in the description as well. Have you heard of Azure Open Source Day? Hmm? This predominantly Linux event is free to attend and is all online on 15th of February. Microsoft has put together a list of set seven reasons why you should attend, which I have linked below. Okay, this is another favorite story from the past week, mainly because the headline had quantum and space in it. I make no excuses. So NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, has turned to Azure Quantum to explore ways to communicate more efficiently with spacecraft, 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 exploring our solar system and beyond. That's what Microsoft said in a blog post. Now JPL are using quantum-inspired optimization algorithms on Azure to increase the fidelity they can use for missions such as the Mars rover and the James Webb Space Telescope. The quantum service on Azure is complementing the JPL Deep Space Network, a network of large radio telescopes in California, Spain, and right here in Australia. In this specific example, Microsoft is describing how they reduce the time needed for a scheduling optimization from two hours to, ready for this, 16 minutes. When you're dealing with messages going to Mars, optimizing the process time for each update or schedule to the rover, telescope, or whatever you're controlling, an almost tenfold decrease in time is huge. For those that still doubt the value of space exploration and technology, remember that scheduling problems are not unique to NASA and space. These problems exist in most industries and they will benefit from this advance too. I love it. I said NASA. Is it NASA or not? It's NASA, isn't it? I'm sorry. Let's say NASA. NASA. Yes. And now, and now the plug. plug. Is 2022 the year of picking up cloud computing knowledge? Then check out ACG's free plan. Gives you access to free courses and quizzes, plus learning paths and original series content. Now the entire month of February, the full course introduction to the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework for Azure is free, as well as a bunch of other content. And you don't need a credit card sign up. I'll include links in the description below. Azure Arc lets you include your on-premises and other cloud, VMs, SQL servers, and Kubernetes clusters in Azure. With Arc, you can control them and monitor them 
as if they were on Azure. It's one of those key tools on Azure to facilitate an efficient hybrid infrastructure. Now, Azure Landing Zones are the output of a multi-subscription Azure environment that accounts for scale, security, governance, networking, and identity. In other words, it's a recommended approach to get the best out of Azure in a secure and scalable way. Putting this together with the Cloud Adoption Framework, you get a Landing Zone Accelerator, which can now take Arc into account. Yeah, it's pretty cool. As Microsoft puts it, the Landing Zone Accelerator provides best practices, guidance, and automated reference implementations so that customers can get started with their deployments quickly and easily. Now, the quickly and easily parts should be taken with a grain of salt, as hybrid environments are not always straight forward. But at least the Landing Zone Accelerator will provide an initial approach and way forward. We've got no more for you this week. Covering huge internet attacks, quantum, space, and hybrid is no small feat, though. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you want more cloud knowledge, ACG has a ton of... No, no, no. It's an actual ton, because I measured it. A ton of cloud content on both the ACG platform and YouTube. Check it out and consider signing up for a free account, too. We'd love to have you join our friendly learner community. I'll see you in the Clyde. In the Clyde? I'll see you in the Clyde. I'll see you in the cloud. Keep being awesome, Cloud Gurus. I'll see you in the Clyde Cloud. <laughs>